Most intralinguistics classes start with phonetics and phonology. There are good reasons for that, it has everything we like. Awkwardly trying to recreate sounds, silly recordings and vast charts of scary looking lettery things. But probably the most important reason is that when we think about language, most of us probably first think about speaking. That's just what we do naturally. We produce a variety of sounds using our lips, tongue, mouth and some bits in our throat. If you want to make a P sound for example, you close your lips and then release the air all at once. If you want to make an M sound, you also close your lips and then you kind of hum and so on. This is what phonetics and phonology deal with, human speech sounds. All the plops and hisses and trills we make to show other people what's going on in our heads. It would be hard to get by without those. Phonetics and phonology look at what sounds we make, how we make them and, at least phonology, looks at if there's a system behind that or if we're just stringing random sounds together and in the end something comes out that makes a bit of sense. But why do we need two disciplines to deal with that? Well, because they approach the stuff really quite a bit differently. Phonetics is very, very precise. There it really matters if your A is a bit lower or higher or if you push out lots of air with your P's and T's and D's or not and if you pronounce the T's in butter as T, butter, D, butter or just kind of tap your tongue against your gum ridge, butter. Phonetics is interested in how we make sounds, how we hear those sounds, how we can describe them to deal with them empirically in a scholarly setting and how we can make those sounds visible in a way that's actually practical to write down and print. Phonology, on the other hand, doesn't sweat those little details very much. It's not like a Londoner wouldn't understand butter and vice versa. Phonology says it's the same idea of a sound, they just say it a bit differently. This may sound a bit silly, but think of the L sound, for example. English has two of those. In words like law or light, where it's at the start, it sounds a bit different than in words like fall or ball. Those sound much, much darker. But you can't really mix them up because in English, light L's only come in the beginning of a syllable and dark ones at the end. So phonologists say that because they can't come in the same spots, the difference doesn't matter. They don't ever change the meaning of a word. That is what phonology is interested in. Systems. Clearly, the two L sounds don't make much of a difference. Pan and can, though. Those P and K sounds change whether you're frying something or drinking it. A result is that in phonetics, what language you're investigating doesn't matter very much. A B in Libyan Arabic is the same as a B in English. But when you look at the systems, it's a different story. In English, there's a P sound and bin and pin are not quite the same thing, really. Arabic speakers mostly don't make a difference between those sounds. So there the difference doesn't matter to a phonologist. It's a bit like the L's in English. You can see that it may be quite important to know whether someone is giving you a phonetic transcription of a word, which is very precise, or a phonological one, which only tells you what you need to know to figure out the rest. That's why we use square brackets for phonetic transcriptions and slashes for phonological ones. We also have different names for the sounds, depending on whether we are thinking about them phonetically or phonologically. In phonetics, we call them phones. No, no, not that kind of phone. In phonology, we call them phonemes. The difference between those is a story for another time, though. Let's have a quick recap of what we went over today. Phonetics and phonology, those are both linguistic disciplines that are all about speech sounds. Phonetics describes the sounds we actually make as precisely as possible, while phonology only looks at what really makes a difference in any one given language and it tries to find the implications of that. As a quick side note, there's also phonetics and phonology for sign languages, even though sign languages obviously don't have sounds in them. For this series, though, we'll be dealing with oral languages only, but we may dive deeper into sign language linguistics at a later point.